Well, good morning there. It's Monday and it's just a little bit after seven in the morning. It's a teensy tiny bit chilly. Well, welcome back. So like I told you last week, I was looking for a time that the light would be good and the temperature would be good and I wouldn't be glowing so much uh, to do our tours. And I think it's gonna be kind of here in this little golden hour, not too long after the sun comes up and a little bit before I run my children to school. So we've got some things going on. I'm gonna share with you today and a couple little projects that I've got going on this side. So let's get going on our tour. So let's start over here with the tomato and look at this mammoth jamma. We had some super high winds last week and she was starting to lean over to the side so I went ahead and got her in a cage and lots of her friends over here are a nice getting to be really nice heights now and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit in a minute about all the good stuff that we did to feed the plants yesterday and after I did the full year feed on the squashes they're all looking real good you know they're not developing any more of the yellowing and everything else coming in is green we've got a lot of flower production going on down here now, we did end up taking like a full week off of watering because we uh, and that might have been a thing too it might have been the squashes were getting over watered and a little bit of the magnesium deficiency um, but yesterday was the first time we've watered since you and I've been back together so that's just a little side note for you but here's the rest of the squash and like I said this was like one of the last presentations of not so great and everything else is just really starting to look super nice and over here at bed two I just went ahead and took out that broccoli I'm enjoying watching how tall um, the collards are so the collards are really pretty to me but because of the wind the broccoli that was seeded was falling all over and I just didn't want to look at it anymore and I had a couple of pepper seedlings that were still in my seed tray that I needed to get into the garden so I just stuck them in uh, and these squash are still looking good. These mustard greens are looking awesome. A lot of this spinach that was hurt right here was bolting, so I took it out. And this is one of the Anazi beans that has actually made it through. I don't see any more of them coming up. And this doesn't necessarily look like a bean. Uh, maybe it's a, maybe that's another okra. I have to look in my book, but we do have okra coming up in the other bed too. So, um, but this is looking awesome and it's uh, hanging in there and getting bigger. So we might get to get us a big pot of mustard greens before it's all said and done. The strawberry is just eking along. Um, this is a little bit of cilantro that I stuck in some random buckets. This one's doing good here too. I'm gonna cut all this um, because it's, I don't want it to go into suffering towards the end of the week. And a lot of things over here, like all these fuzz balls that you see, um, these are all seeds that I need to collect today. And a lot of things are passing away here in the garden. <laughs> we do have a fail. So we decided to pull up one of our garlics and that's about how big it is. So I don't know if the rest of them need to keep going or if this was just a fail or we planted too small of cloves to begin with. Um, but check out all the beautiful things going on. That's the red romaine flower there bloomed out. Um, beautiful bouquet there. Many more co um, coriander seeds. So this bed's just uh, come into the end of its days and I'm gonna figure out some other things to put in here as we collect a little bit more of these seeds. These flowers over here are just really doing gangbusters and we're so pleased because we didn't think that they were gonna get enough sunshine but the sunflowers are super happy and that makes me happy. Okay, over here in bed too, um, we took out the cauliflower. Um, another thing is um, I'm, I'm gonna be away for a couple days and so I'm not wanting anything that's old to be able to attract predators like aphids that could take over a bed and some healthy plants. So that's another reason why I took the cauliflower and the broccoli out. But that's a good little pan there of bed too. Lots of the little, um, oh yeah, and that's a cucumber that we direct sowed in the bed that came up. But otherwise, that's a radish and lots of the radishes are doing great and they're happier than they were a week ago. This 
beautiful bed I don't know if you can tell I'm gonna come back is about three foot high now with these that have come up here and sprouted up and we got our first cornflower that came in and it looks super purple but it's really supposed to be a little bit more of a blue and we've got some more coming in over here that's a bloom right there and one that's about to come in there so this beautiful edible bed just keeps on pushing for us and we love it and I'll show you in a minute um, where I've been collecting some flowers and seeds from the calendula. Okay, now we're going to come over here and check out bed one, and then we're going to go look at some compost tea that I've got brewing. Run you inside, show you some slips and different things I've got growing on my kitchen window, as well as some seeds that I've collected. So let's check out bed one. So we had the first little inklings of a, what I believe, this is an okra coming up here, and it got, we, we did a lot of fertilizing yesterday. I'm gonna show you in a video here in a minute where we um, did all that, but so that's why that's kind of covered up there. And this, this is the best looking kale I've ever had. So I promise you, Today I'm going to get a good cutting of this. All the green leaf lettuce over there and over here looks awesome. The radishes are looking good. Cantaloupes are coming in crazy right there. Tomatillas are still looking a little eh, but I'm hoping after the big fertilizing they will just pop back up with happiness. Now, if you don't know, on these kinds of flowers, if you come by and the ones that are hard, if you just pluck that whole thing out, it'll tell the plant to make some more, but not so much the ones like this one's soft, but not dry. Soft, soft, and this one's dry. So, and it'll just pluck right out. But I've continually come out here and taken, or deadhead, that's what it's called, deadheaded this, and it just keeps on making prettier and prettier flowers for me. So I'm happy with that. And <laughs> I did go ahead and pull out the, uh, See, there's the stump right there of the borage but it just kept falling over I mean you can see like it had fallen over on all this and the nasturtium you know has just gone wild and over there we've got a lot of calendula that is still managing to not be taken over by the nasturtium but I'm loving all of this like my daughter even said yesterday she was like mom there was nothing over here and we made it really pretty so and we did Okay, so real quick, it's Sunday evening and we're about to start watering and I've got some azomite here and a nifty shaker that I've been wanting to take out of the kitchen forever. And I'm just going along. I really think that my beds need some fertilizing and we're um, gonna be away from the gardens for a little bit and I really wanna see some good growth come out of everything that we've got going right now. So I'm going along with the azomite here and behind me, I've got the little girls going. So Joe's putting on some um, worm castings, um, black gold, and then May is putting compost on top of that. And so we've got a layer of azomite that we're sprinkling from the shaker. And then Joe's going along and putting like three handfuls of worm castings. Then May's going back over and covering it all over with some new compost. And just remember girls if you get on the leaves to kind of yeah. shake it off yeah. so i just wanted to bring you in to how we feed our garden all the tomatoes over here have been planted now for just about three weeks and um everything else in the garden about two weeks so just felt like it was a good time to get a good push of nutrients into all the plants so we can get some great development so azomite is um, volcanic ash and almost all of it comes out of Utah and what it does is it's not a replacement for how you fertilize your garden. It's actually a way to remineralize your soil and that's something that we didn't really do a good job of in these beds as we crossed over from spring to summer. I think I got a little too involved in focusing on uh, getting my transplants going and I lost track of getting my soil re-energized for the spring and summer harvest. So we're excited to see um, lots of new growth from this. Okay, before I forget, this is some awesome compost tea that I've got brewing. Um, I've got just like a fish filter kind of aeration stone, if you can see that. 
that's in there and I aerated this water for 24 hours to get all the chlorine out of it and then I made myself a little tea bag out of some twall right there and so that's got like two heaping handfuls of compost and a good couple of handfuls of earthworm castings and some azomite and this fuzzy or bubbling this kind of foaming is letting me know that my tea is ready to go so i'm going to use this also to feed the plants once we get through watering so this is my compost tea and i've got i showed you what it looked like yesterday in a video that i'm going to slide in here and this is how it looks today it's super super active that's what all this is telling us um, that's going on so i'm going to be going along today and giving everybody a cup of this um, just to boost up all the awesome things that we fed them yesterday so now i'm here in the kitchen and i know that this sweet potato is a, a pretty late in the game but i'm having so much fun with it i just really don't mind um but if we pull this out here you can see all those little white parts there are this the, the root system starting to go which is i think i put these in upside down when i did this one because this one was formerly down in the water like it was what was in the water but those are like little leaves and overnight because it's been out of water it's kind of dried up so i think i'm going to flip it back over and just let those grow up from the bottom i just need to get them in a different container where the slips can come up the side and this is my little onion project that just keeps on growing and look at this mass of roots in here how cool is that? So I'm just going to let this keep going and keep it full of water and hopefully we'll just have a huge ball of roots and some awesome onions to keep snipping from because every time we need green onions we just come along and clip 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 and toss them into whatever we're cooking. Now uh, here's some seeds I want to share with you. This is from the, the lettuce that I showed you out there just now that is uh, Kind of fuzzy looking like dandelion so these are the seeds that i collected from it this stuff right here is just kind of the fuzzy thing that holds it but the black there is the actual seeds from the lettuce and these are some seeds that i've been um, collecting from the cosmos a little and the seed head is actually right there so i can pull some out for you so see these right here that's the actual seed for the cosmos. In this calendula bag, well, this isn't really a bag. It's like some toile that I've been drying calendula in. But the calendula seeds are really, really cool if you get to look at them up close. So that's something I wanted to show you is how unique these seeds look. So. If you come in here and look, they kind of, see how they look like kind of little worms? And if I, I think they look even neater like once they're separated. Because once they're separated, they look, my husband said they almost look like a bug. But that's what the calendula seed looks like. And so they just are all kind of furled down in there together. But that's exactly what it looks like when it's ready to plant in your garden. So there's a little bit of seed collecting and flower collecting because uh, all this calendula here can be used at me as medicine. I don't altogether know if I'm collecting it at the right stage. Like I've read some articles that say you're supposed to get your flowers like right in the morning, right as they're opening up, right you know before the sun is fully out and then it seems like other people collect them at all different stages so that's something I'm still trying to learn through um, but I love using it in a salve that we make so I'm just continuing to collect it and in the meantime I'm also collecting a lot of awesome seeds so I'm grateful for that because I definitely love planting calendula so 
the girls i gotta go get the girls up and get them ready for school but i hope that you enjoyed our little tour today and the little plugins of where we uh fertilized the garden yesterday and remineralized the soil and the little tip on how to make compost tea and i hope you have the best day ever and thanks so much it's holy week so i hope this is the best week ever for you and we'll catch up with you next week um we'll be on a little bit of a delay next weekend because of easter so we'll actually catch up with you on tuesday instead of monday for just one time so again have the best day ever